Most developers have heard of OAuth and OpenID Connect, but if you're anything like me and you've Googled these terms, what you found was probably really confusing. On the one hand, you have deeply technical articles that are full of jargon that explain things to you, but assume you already know all the technical terms, which if you're just trying to learn it for the first time, you don't. On the other hand, there's incorrect and just wrong advice between one guy's blog that says to use things one way and the top answer on Stack Overflow that tells you to use things a totally different way. This is really confusing and difficult to understand if you're a newbie. Hi, I'm Nate Barbatini and I work here at Okta on our product management team. In this short video, I'll explain how both OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect work at a high level and explain when you should use these or how you should think about using them in your application. So let's take a look at OAuth 2.0 first. A basic use case that I would use OAuth 2.0 for is something like this. Let's say that I have an application and my application wants to get access to a little bit of your information in Google. Maybe your Google profile info or your list of Google contacts. In order to do that, my application would render a button for the user that says connect with Google or authorize with Google. When the user clicks that button, they'll be redirected in their browser over to google.com or actually accounts.google.com in this case. Accounts.google.com is an authorization server that the user can log into, enter their email and password, but their password is kept secure on google.com and is never shared with my application. The next thing the user would see is a prompt or a pop-up that asks them if they're okay with this application having access to XYZ information in their Google account. And this is a pop-up that we've probably all seen on Facebook or Google. We're probably pretty familiar with clicking accept to say, yeah, this application can have access to a little bit of my data in Facebook or Google, for example. After the user clicks accept on that consent prompt, the browser gets redirected back over to my application at a special location called a callback URL or a redirect URL. My application then gets something called an access token from Google. And that access token is stamped with the proof that I, as the user, clicked accept on that consent prompt. My application can then use that access token to go call a Google API or call a Google system and access some data that they normally wouldn't have access to, but because the access token is connected to the request, they have access to that data. Now, so far, we've just been talking about authorization or exchanging permissions between systems. That was what OAuth was originally designed for, and it works really well. A lot of systems and companies adopted OAuth 2.0 as the standard for exchanging this type of permission or authorization data between systems on the internet. The problem was it was so successful that people also decided they wanted to use it for authentication as well, logging users in, not just exchanging permissions. The problem was that OAuth wasn't really designed for authentication. Specifically, it doesn't have any way of getting the user's info when the user logs in, which is what you would need in an authentication scenario. That's where OpenID Connect comes in. OpenID Connect is not a new protocol, it's just a standard or an extra layer on top of OAuth 2.0 that adds some additional stuff for that authentication scenario as well. If we take a look at an OpenID Connect flow, you'll notice it looks exactly the same as an OAuth 2.0 flow. The only difference is, at the end of this dance, I don't just get an access token, I also get something called an ID token, which has all of the user's information, their name, their email address, when they logged in, etc. This makes OpenID Connect work well in these authentication scenarios. Now, a lot of people get confused about the relationship between OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect. Maybe because OpenID Connect is newer and some people think that it replaces OAuth 2.0, but that's not the case at all. OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect are different tools for different use cases. If your system needs to do authorization, request permissions in a remote system, or maybe allow your users to grant permissions to another system, you'll be using OAuth 2.0. On the other hand, if you need to do authentication, single sign-on or logging in through an external identity provider, that's OpenID Connect. Now, there's a whole lot more that goes into how these protocols work, and we've really only scratched the surface here. If you're interested in a deeper dive, check out the link below in the description where I have a longer talk that goes into a lot of technical detail on how these protocols work and how you should use them in your applications. We also have a free ebook available on OAuth.com, which explains how you should use OAuth 2.0 in your own applications. That link is below as well. Be sure to come back here and check out the support portal for more videos like this because we're going to be posting many more soon.